Here we go again. Oh, no, not again. You've seen it before, haven't you? Dom, how long have we been doing this? Once more unto the bridge. Dear friends. Well, again and again and again until we're both dead. Hello and welcome to You've Seen It Before, movie reviews, connections in mind. Toy Story 4 is the latest installment in the Toy Story franchise, a whole 24 years after the release of the original film and 9 years after the release of the previous installment. And this film once again focuses on Woody and Buzz, uh, voiced again by Tom Hanks and Tim Allen. And uh, this time around we continue from where we once left off uh, in the previous installment with the toys that was under the uh, in the care of our the new kid Bonnie and Bonnie going into kindergarten has created a new a new friend namely Forky, a toy made out of just a spork and pipe cleaner somehow given new life as a toy, but uh, Woody has now taken. Forky under his wing that because Forky is wrestling with the concept of him actually being a toy in the care of Bonnie rather than just being trash and along the way uh, Woody and Forky become separated from the rest of the toys and the family on a road trip and Woody uh, must take it upon himself to return Forky to his uh, uh, his proper kid Bonnie and along the way encounters uh, old friends such as Bo Peep, who we last saw in Toy Story 2, another rip-roaring adventure of the Toy Story franchise. Now, this video review will contain spoilers of certain films. There will be a full list of the description below. And if you have not seen Toy Story 4 yet or any of the films listed below and want to wait until you have, uh, I will be doing my spoiler-filled analysis at the end of this uh, review. But just keep in mind that there will be spoilers in this review uh, after I do my spoiler-filled analysis. So with this in mind, uh, let's get into my spoiler-free thoughts and review of Toy Story 4. Is it a worthy sequel? Is it worth seeing in the theaters? Uh, is it any good? Period. I would say yes. I defy you to say that there isn't, in fact, a bad Toy Story film. This is, once again, a fun Toy Story film full with heart. Uh, full of characters that you actually want to hang out with and you actually care about. These are characters that we still care about whether you're 4 years old or 24 years old or 64 years old. Um, these are good characters and you can feel with them as they go on their adventures. Um, the old characters, Woody, Buzz, they're still so much fun to be around. Uh, and the new characters, like... Forky is such an, a great character, and he has some of the best lines in this film, honestly. And even some of the best, uh, and some of the best uh, lines in this film come from the new characters, such as uh, Duke Kaboom, a uh, a motorcycle uh, toy voiced by Keanu Reeves, has some great lines in here as well. And this, uh, the return of Bo Peep as a uh, law, uh, as a new, as a returning character, she uh, has presents such a great contrast with where, uh, where her toy, uh, she has evolved into a new character, a new, uh, a new place in her life where Woody seems to be stuck in his own um, situation, uh, still clinging to the idea of uh, he is the toy for one kid, where Bo Peep uh, is. Uh, considered a lost toy. She has no kid of her own, but she's trying to uh, look out for all the other toys and she can get played with uh, by with multiple kids. Um, this is just these are just the kind of themes that this uh, Toy Story uh, interacts with. Whereas the Toy Stories one through three seem to be focusing on uh, the toys arc uh, th uh, with Andy as he progressed through various stages of life. Now we focus on the toys themselves. Woody, Buzz, Jess, Forky, all these uh, different toys in various stages of their being. Where Woody being the grizzled veteran and Forky being the brand new creation and seeing things with a brand new light. Not only being uh, how being a toy for Bonnie is, but the concept of even being a toy. These are just some of the things that 
this film does a good job exploring while being a great story. Um, the only bad parts about this film, I would have to say, is that the first three films of Toy Story were such a complete story. And once uh, Toy Story 3 served as such a great uh, cap to a trilogy of films. And there just didn't really seem a need for another Toy Story. And for another Toy Story to come a whole nine years after the trilogy that we thought was concluded, um, it just seems that it needed a, a lot more to justify its existence, to add on to the story uh, than it did. And in my estimation, I would say it didn't quite uh, justify its existence in the context of it being another film in the Toy Story saga. On its own, I would say it is a perfectly serviceable, fun film to watch, and you can have some laugh, laughs with, and if you're just watching the whole Toy Story franchise, I would say it's serviceable from that uh, perspective. However, just based on the fact that we had these, those, that three perfect films, they set the bar so ridiculously high that just being a good film wasn't necessarily enough. And I feel like those other three films kind of did this film a disservice by being so good, if, they, if that makes any sense. That they were so good, the fact that this is just good to okay uh, is, makes it less somehow. And I feel like that's unfair to this film, but that's just the kind of the realm that we end up being. So that was, if I were to give this film a negative, that would be my main negative. Um, also, uh, if we're going to be nitpicky about things, certain things about uh, different characters, again, I won't get into spoilers, um, this, uh, certain things about this, the, the characters come and go and don't necessarily make sense, or certain things pop up, um, uh, pop up and go away according to the plot's whim and don't make, uh, aren't really consistent throughout. Um, one character in particular, if you've seen it, you, uh, you, will rec uh, you may recognize what I'm going for. If not, you may see what I mean. But overall, I would say, yeah, those are just, those are just minor nitpicky things that I would have issue with. Um, but overall, I would say this is definitely worth seeing in theaters. Um, and if possible, see it with, see it with friends, see it with family. They'll, uh, you'll have a great time uh, as friends and family seeing a film to get this film together. So those are my spoiler free thoughts on this film. And oh, once again, I would, if I were to give this film a letter grade, I would say this is definitely a solid A. Uh, not A plus, not A minus, just A. Uh, if the other three films are definitely A pluses, this just feels like an A. It's a good film. It's, it hit the mark. It just didn't reach the, the insanely high bar of what the other three films did as a collective. So those are my main spoiler-free thoughts on this film. Now let's get into some spoiler-filled analysis on certain plot developments and character arcs uh, from Toy Story 4 that seem familiar and where you may have seen them before. Um, my, uh, one of the things that I noticed in this film is the main antagonist of this film. Uh, uh, there really is a more eth uh, ethereal antagonist in this film, but the main uh, physical antagonist for Woody, our main characters, is Gabby Gabby, the doll uh, in the antique shop who uh, wants Woody's voice box and she has a sort of a uh, maniacal streak in her that she has a one track mind to try to get uh, adopted by the, the kid who is the granddaughter of the owner of this antique store and she goes to great means to try and um, get Woody's voice box by hiring, uh, by keeping Forky hostage and um, having a bunch of minion dummies that are kind of creepy in their own right uh, as, her, as her henchmen to try and stop, um, to stop Woody from escaping with this voice box that she needs. She kind of rules this antique store with sort of an iron fist. I mean, this is sort of a recycled plot from uh, Toy Story 3 in the, uh, with Lotso, where we have a toy who has uh, been in, uh, looked over by other kids for so long, and they have a uh, enclosed kingdom as that they rule with an iron fist, so to speak. Um, 
much like Lotso did with the daycare. Um, only this in this in Toy Story three, uh, Lotso was a much more uh, straight up bad guy. Whereas um, in in Toy Story four, Gabby Gabby uh, seems to ha gets more of a redemptive arc with her, where she's evil only because she she has good motives, but she has uh, she's going about her uh, quest the wrong way in uh, in keeping in acting in an evil manner to fulfill her purpose that all toys theoretically want to have where they want to be have a home for a child so there's that uh, element that you can see is sort of recycled from the previous toy story uh, also the main um, plot with forky uh, being um, the creation that was never meant to be that uh, try, Forky trying to wrestle with the concept of what it is to be a toy, how, he's, how is he even alive to begin with, and how can he fill a purpose that he feels that he is not, uh, as he says that uh, in the trailers that, and in the movie, that he was meant for, for soup uh, or uh, salads and then to be thrown away, not as a toy, but then to feel a new role. I mean, there's sort of the, the Frankenstein arc to that, uh, which we've seen in both literature and film with the Frankenstein story, as well as there's an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation uh, where Data uh, creates his own off, uh, his own child, Lal, and she has to come to, to terms with um, uh, both her status as Data's child, but also uh, looking like an adult, being an android, while also trying to transcend that to be human, uh, more human than her own father, um, wrestling with those concepts. So you can see that element as well. And also, finally, the, con uh, the other main conflict being that uh, Woody is struggling with uh, his own inner demon, uh, inner workings, trying to be whether, uh, coming to terms with whether he is just um, Bonnie is the next kid uh, after Andy, or could he potentially um, find greater meaning in breaking the norms and becoming the lost toy where he can help other toys find homes, but also uh, help other toys and be the kid, uh, the toy of multiple kids in this fair, this traveling fair. And um, this whole theme of a character who we've established has theoretically one lot in life and that lot in life is not necessarily the only way to go and uh, this character's rigidity in trying to keep maintain this one way of life while uh, trying to resist evolving into something else. Um, we've seen that in a whole bunch of other things. Uh, some examples that I came up with are um, the new version of the Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian shows the main Pevensey kids, uh, especially Peter uh, trying to cling to his old role as High King of Narnia and how the old ways work and his own uh, ability uh, in leading and how he's, he has the ultimate goal and how things are supposed to work, whereas um, his rigidity and trying to not uh, adapt to the new uh, Narnia and how to um, uh, make up, uh, evolve into the new way of uh, battle and how to yield to a new uh, way of thinking in this new Narnia. So there's that. And also, uh, I could also point to both the Dinotopia books and the uh, early 2000s Dinotopia miniseries in which our main characters are flung into the realm of Dinotopia where they find out that their old lives are technically gone uh, and they can no, no longer escape from Dinotopia. Uh, but then people who wash up on the shores of Dinotopia find new life uh, in the... Um, new life, new purpose on the island. Um, David, uh, one of the kid, uh, the brothers, finds this a lot more easy to do, whereas Carl, the other brother, uh, has a lot more resistance to this, and he tries harder and harder to try to escape Dinotopia while also real, slowly realizing that, yes, that is impossible, but he can also find new life, and he's, this new life is somewhat forced upon him, but he's slowly growing into the realization that he can, in fact... Um, 
find new meaning on Dientopia. So those are some other some examples that I could think of, and I'm sure there are others as well. So, but those are my main points on a comparison between Toy Story 4 and what it's come before. But what did you think of Toy Story 4? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Um, what about my analysis? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Again, did I miss anything? I probably missed something. Let me know in the comments down below. I appreciate whatever I, I can get. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, be sure to look for my next movie review, which will be for Spider-Man Far From Home, which is coming out uh, July 5th. And also my next TV review, uh, which will be coming up, I currently have up uh, my review of the, the third and final season of Jessica Jones. And also be sure to look for my next TV review, which will be for Stranger Things season three coming out on the 4th of July. I'll be having uh, posting those as soon as I can. And if you like what you see here or anywhere else on my channel, please give me a like, share, and especially subscribe. I'd very much appreciate it. Again, thank you so much for watching. And just remember, there is nothing new under the sun. And yes, you have seen it before.